Hi there, this is SJO in Science, and we're still not quite finished with our discussion about those things that all living things do on planet Earth. Last time, we saw that all living things have a complex chemistry. Remember that chemistry is when we talk about atoms and molecules. Atoms are smaller than molecules. Molecules are made of more than one atom. The point is that atoms and molecules are some of the smallest pieces of matter. And living things are made of atoms and molecules as well. Living things have a chemistry that is very complex or complicated. In short, living things are not simple at the atomic and molecular levels. Next, we saw that all living things maintain homeostasis or control over internal conditions. Remember that homeostasis means that there is an inside and an outside to all living things. The inside is controllable by homeostasis. Some of the features of the inside of a living thing are blood sugar level or body temperature or acidity, among other things. The outside of the organism, the environment, is not controllable by homeostasis. Things like the weather or other organisms surrounding or falling rocks or whatever else might be around the organism are not controllable. Next, we'll see that all living things are made of structures called cells. These are things that living things are made of. But what is a cell? This is a term that we'll be adding to our term list. A cell is the smallest unit of life. The smallest portion of this definition is pretty self-explanatory. Cells are small. But what is a unit of life? We can think of this in terms of building blocks. A cell is a building block of life. All living things have to have at least one cell. Some living things have more than one cell, and that's all right, but the bare minimum is one building block of life, or one cell. Let's see some examples. These cells are called bacteria, and they're very small. They're kind of elongated. They are long and blobby looking. There are many in this picture. Here's one, and there's another one over here. But let's see a different kind of cell. This is an amoeba. The amoeba is much, much, much larger than the bacterial cells, but it, we still call it only one cell. It also has a very strange shape compared to the bacterial cell. Cells come in many different shapes and sizes. Next, we'll see that cells can live together. This is a picture of many, many different cells living together. We call this a colony of cells, like an ant colony is a bunch of ants living together. When a colony of cells lives together very closely and can't live without each other, all the cells must live with each other in order to live, we call that a multicellular organism. Multi meaning more than one. So this organism has more than one cell. Remember that all living things have at least one cell, but some of them have more. Some multicellular organisms are made of many, many cells, such as this dung beetle. Humans, we, are made of something like 100 trillion cells. Trillion is another word for a million million. And that's a lot. Next, we'll see that all living things pass their traits onto their offspring. Remember that reproduction involves forming offspring from parents. Parents can make more of themselves by making offspring, which are copies of the parents. Let's add another term to the term list. Heredity is a word that means the sharing of traits between parent and offspring. This may seem complicated, but essentially you can think of this as the reason why we look like our parents. We look like our parents because we share traits with them. We share features. We share characteristics with our parents. Let's take a, an imaginary block organism. This is the mother and the father is below in blue. 
these organisms can mate to produce another block organism. It might look rather much like dad and then have a little bit of mom sprinkled on top. And then another sibling block organism might look more like mom and then have some of dad sprinkled in. And then there may be another block organism produced, another offspring produced, that is kind of a blend between mother and father. You can see that there is no point on this block organism where the red ends and the blue begins. It's a blend. Even stranger still, nature can sometimes become a little bit creative and produce something that is seen in neither mother nor father. These greenish triangle features on this block organism are not in mom or dad, but where did it come from? It came out of random chance. This organism is a mutant. And I'll leave us with that for now. In the next video, we'll talk a little bit more about mutation and how all living things change and evolve. This will be a really neat video, and I'm excited to talk about it. This is SJO in Science, and thanks very much for watching. I hope that you check out some of the other videos.